Okay. Well, I guess we're live now. <laughs> that was unexpected. Um, Alright, so... Welcome, guys. Um, I'm Peking Boo. We're going to be doing a very familiar run that I'm sure you've seen before. But we're going to be doing it on a dance pad. Now, to make matters worse, I'm on Australian internet. Um, I can't read chat. And I'm hoping that I don't drop any frames. So, with all of that said, let's begin the run in three, two, one, go. Mario. Oh god, we gotta start. <laughs> Everything is off to a fantastic start. So, here we are. Uh, hopefully, as I said, because I'm running completely blind, I can't see what's going on. I'm hoping that we're live right now and everything looks okay, and it's all good. Um, so, this is a typical 16 star run, with a few exceptions. Uh, the first being that I'm not using a uh, Nintendo 64 controller. We're controlling the entire thing with the dance pads here. So, on the left, I have my blue uh, panels, which are my directional panels. Uh, and then on the right, I have my pink panels, which are my action panels. So, this one is jump, this one is crouch, this one is dive, and this one we don't use, but it's see up. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna try and get through as quick as possible. Uh, and hopefully without dying or messing anything up. So the first thing we're gonna try and do is try and get like a two skip. Unfortunate, we missed that. But that thing's pretty hard to come by anyway. Now, because of some of the techniques that are involved with a typical 16 star run, I have to kind of improv um, a lot of the ways I'm going to do things. So for example, I can't do bomb clip because it requires too many precise inputs. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for an older strat which is the box clip. And if we mess up the box clip we're going to have to start ground pounding uh, on the pillar to free chain jump. Which we don't want to do, we want to leave change up there. Alright, so let's first of all try to get this box clip. Cool, we got it. I don't have my splitting button. That felt weird, that's a weird muscle memory. This is just weird in general, like, not being able to see what's going on. Like, I'm just hoping everything's going okay. At the moment all I'm doing is just looking back to make sure that uh, no one's... You know, no one's yelling messages at me to say, like, hey, you know, <laughs> something's broken. But, uh, yeah. So, from Chain Chomp, we're gonna go and we're gonna do uh, Princess Peach's Secret Slide. Now, the reason why we're doing this instead of um, what you typically expect in a 16 star run is because I also can't do Cannonless, which is, uh, which is exciting. Oh, and I missed the good skip. So, we're gonna go to the backup which is jumping off here, hoping for the best. And then finishing with an 18.4. I typically finish with a 14 second time, but oh my god. You're going to see me launching myself off the bars every time I get a star, and it's because normally I have to press a button in front of me to split. And uh, it's a weird muscle memory that I've gotten used to that, you know, now that I'm not splitting, uh, there. <laughs> it just, like, it starts and then I don't know what to do with it. So from the slide, we're going to start Womp's Fortress. Uh, as with everything, I'm going to try and do the risky strats first. And then as things go more and more wrong in the marathon, I'll, uh, I don't know. I'll try and, try and make it a bit safer. But early game, we can afford to be risky. Now the reason why I lunge forward to hit these front buttons is they control my camera rotation. Uh, so basically, I can rotate my camera fine, but usually while I'm doing it, I can't move uh, on the dance pad itself. Oh god. That doesn't happen. Okay. So now we're going to go back to the slide once again, once Mario stops, stops showboating for us. 
Here we go. And hopefully this time I'll do the good jump. I'll do the jump that real speedrunners do. There we go, that's more like it. Alright, what are we gonna get? 13.9? going pretty well. Also, I just realized I completely missed out on everything everything in Mom's Fortress. What am I doing? Um, <laughs> so typically, typically I'm supposed to do a lot more in Mom's Fortress before leaving and then going and doing the slide, but I guess I distracted myself uh, with words. So we're going to go back into Womps. Sorry for that minor time loss there. And uh, we're actually going to do the rest of the stages. So we rotate the camera. Now we're going to clear a shot at Womp. Oh my god. Okay, we got the nice camera rotation there. I can't do cannonless is because I don't have any analog controls. Um, so all of my arrow inputs are completely digital, which means uh, my stick, you know, stick movement is basically full tilt. Um, so for things like cannonless, it makes it very hard to do precise movements to set it up. And so we just choose not to. Like it saves more time with not having to mess around. Oh, alright, we're going the long way. That's good. Nothing goes wrong when we go the long way. So at the moment we're trying to get to the top of the fortress. Okay, I think that'll save us. Oh god. Nope, that won't save us. Come on camera. Come on camera. Usually when that part goes wrong, uh, I do a reset. But we're okay. Everything's okay. And we haven't dropped a single frame, that's amazing. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, I'm from Australia, and uh, one of the most difficult things about being a streamer isn't the fact that I'm playing on a dance pad, it's trying to broadcast to you guys without dropping frames. And still trying to keep the stream in a presentable quality. Now, I don't know how good the quality is, I apologise if it's bad, but, you know, at least we're here and we're talking and you can see every single frame of it. That's amazing. Okay. So we don't do Owlless because Owlless takes too long to actually get up to on dance pad, so it's just easier to grab the Owl and go. Alright. That's the second time I've messed that up. I don't normally mess that up. Okay. So typically that's when I would have gone and done the slide. And then we go over to Cool Cool Mountain. So we're going to be doing wall kicks will work, and we're going to be doing... What else are we going to be doing? The penguin! That's right, how can I forget the penguin? The penguin gives me the most trouble. Alright, so, small jump. Kick. Double tap R. One, two, three. Here we go. Here we go. Wall kicks. Now, one of the one of the hardest things uh, about doing this sort of run is that uh, I mean, first of all, it's hard to talk while you do it. But second of all. You only have two limbs, and you usually have to press more than two buttons at once. Oh, penguin, please don't kill me. Alright, good, we had a good penguin. 
If you go too far left or too far right, uh, Mario actually drops the penguin because you either hit the wall or a gust of wind takes the penguin from you. Thankfully, neither of those two things happen. Um, but yeah, like, just, I don't know, some of the hardest things are just trying to get your feet to do more than one thing or more than two things at a time. So like in this case, I'm heel toeing so that I can hold Z and press A uh, with one foot like this. And then I'm moving myself with the other foot like that. And it, uh, it becomes a lot more complicated later when we have to do backward long jumps. But the drawback about doing pretty much every long jump with this setup uh, is that if I accidentally hit jump before I hit uh, crouch, I'm going to do a ground pound instead, which loses me a second every single time. So part of the reason why my estimate for this run is at about 35 minutes uh, is because there's just a, a huge tendency for things to go wrong. I'm hoping it doesn't, but I mean there's definitely a huge, huge tendency for it to happen, especially with backward long jumps. All in all though, that was a good Bowser 1. Dude, we're still at zero frames dropped. Amazing. Alright, so now we have to spin Bowser. So we hit C right and C down. So we have a bomb directly above us. And the way spinning Bowser works is so long as you're holding at least one direction, Bowser doesn't lose speed. And then for every new direction you hit, Bowser gains speed. Cool. And it's actually really rare for me to get that first throw, so I'm glad that happened. So you saw there, once I got Bowser to a, a high enough speed, I actually just held the up arrow and got myself into position to throw it. Um, and that's because, as I said, he doesn't lose speed so long as you're holding a direction. As soon as you... Um, as soon as you add more directions to that, it adds to his speed. So, you know, it's still very slow for me to spin him, but I don't have to spin... I don't have to tap around like crazy to get it working. I'm kind of hoping that uh, that's also how the Mario Party minigame works for um, the, the Boo Cycle minigame in Mario Party 1, because I really want to run the Mario Party games as well. I think that would be fun, but I haven't tested out the rotating of the stick yet. And I think that would be the run killer. Alright, so now we are going to Hazy Maze Cave. We're going to be getting three stars from here. First one is uh, the amazing escape or exit, I forget what it's called. And we're going to have to do this the semi scrub way. Jumping over to here, aligning with this wall. Double jumping, wall kicking, going around the sign, waiting for the camera to rotate for us. There we go. So that's all good. Next one we're going to do is the rolling rocks. Um, these have a tendency to screw me when I'm under pressure, so... You know, considering we're doing a marathon, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume they're gonna kill me. Let's all pray they don't. I oh, no, the rocks were good this time. Sometimes they go to the left, and uh, they just knock me straight off as soon as I get there. Cool. All right, next up. Next up is um, one of the more enjoyable ones, which is uh, swimming, swimming beast in the cabin. The reason it's so enjoyable is because I don't really have to do a whole lot. I just run around this corner, jump onto this elevator, push up against this wall, tap right just a tiny bit to try and align with the star. Clip through and then just get the stuff. Super simple. Here we go. Okay. 
We're gonna get a freebie from Toad, so that's nice. Oops. Didn't mean for that to happen. Hopefully he gets, he lands on the other side of this rail. He didn't. That's okay. All right, we're good. So the next thing we're about to do is actually, it has potential to completely kill the run. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't happen, but if I accidentally fall inside the pyramid, we might have a huge time loss on our hands. All right, so be safe, Mario. Do not go in that pyramid, no matter how tempting it is to fuck me up. Thank you. Alright, star number 14. Let us go to Lethal Lava Land to get one of the easiest stars, which is the Lava Red Coins. So we rotate the camera, jump, dive. Bounce our way across. And then it's just a clean run around. No problem. Now this part of the run is where things start getting uh, very time lossy. So what we have to do now is a series of uh, annoying clips with Mips. So first of all I have to catch Mips, which thankfully I can back into a corner here, go to the right a bit, and then dive so that when it jumps to the right, um, I'm already there to catch it. So we get a free Mips. The thing that sucks is that now I have to try and clip with it through, um, first of all this door, which Typically isn't too hard, but I've been messing it up lately, so we might lose a bit of time. This looks good though. Cool, thanks Mips. And three. Not really a whole lot to say about this. Only thing I can really think of is that uh, because the level is so quiet, you can usually hear the creaking of my dance pad, and so I kind of like to think that I'm on a rickety boat while I'm doing this. And you know, considering the music and the theme of the stage, I think it's kind of suiting. I don't know how much of the, uh, the creaking comes through though. Hopefully it's minimal, but still. It's all about that ambience. Alright, he's up. Oh, he's down. Good on you, Mario. Always oh, know exactly what to do. Alright, we'll rotate this so that we're good. One, two, three, dive. Oh, we didn't roll out. Beautiful. One of the perks of having to move your entire body to press a button. Oh, Mario, thank you. He's been so helpful today. Now hopefully if everything goes well, I can just do a big double jump straight in. Nope, all right. So this stage has the potential to go really good or really bad. First of all, depending on that first jump. So we're gonna bonk, go diagonal, get two coins. Dive, oh. The reason we get the two coins there is so that if I accidentally miss that heart, we don't die by hitting the lava. That was a shaky jump. Good. All right, we got the first cycle. And we've got our health back. So the risks are gone. The reason I get the heart there is so that it heals me a bit while I'm moving across here. Now to save on time, we try to minimize spinning Bowser as much as possible. So starting with this, we hit C right and C down, so that we have a bomb directly below us. And um, 
Unlike typical Mario 64 16 star runs, mine is kind of RNG dependent, where I want Bowser to run at me exactly like he did just then, first cycling. So then I can grab him and just hit the bomb like that. Sometimes he can jump, which will waste about 10 seconds or so. But even that 10 second waste is still faster than trying to spin him and hit a bomb. Cool. And with that, we're approaching the end of the run. That was a pretty quick half hour. So, the last part of this run is actually where all of the time loss typically comes from. And it's because I now have to do backward long jumps. To give myself a little more accuracy, I actually take my right shoe off um, so that I can have a little more precision with my, my mashing between Z and A, which are these two here. Um, but yeah, <laughs> at this point it's anyone's guess how quickly I'll get these BLJs done. So, wish me luck! Alright. First failed one. And if you want to uh, get an idea of what this is like, just try keeping your toe completely planted on the floor and mash your heel as fast as possible. It's actually really hard to do. And I have to do it twice. Come on, Mario. Come on, Mario. Admittedly, it's the only part of the run I don't like because I'm not consistent enough at it. Like, I'll get it eventually. But eventually ain't good enough when you're trying to do a speed run, you know? Dang it! And then there's that whole the jump just stops working thing. <sighs> Come on, Mario. This is so exhausting. <laughs> You can do it, buddy. I believe in you. Let's try the hand system. Nope, that doesn't want to work either. <sighs> Mario, you're embarrassing me. Stop it. Okay, we're through. That's the first one. Now, in my PB, I think I did both of these in under a minute. So, I think we're long past PB. Come on. Okay, we're through. That is so exhausting. It makes me short of breath just, just doing it. So now we're in Bowser 3. Spirits are low because we know it's not a PB. But, well, energy's also low because of the backward long jumps. But that's okay. I think time-wise I'm still doing pretty well. Which means for this next part, I'm gonna try the risky strat once. Which is skipping this moving conveyor. <laughs> and trying to jump the whole way across. But as you can see, I'm not super good at that. So this time around, we won't do that. Cool. I, oh god, Mario, stop. 
I just wanted to make sure it was back before I ran across. So the reason we try to do the risky strat is so that we don't have to wait for this platform to go across. As you can see, it's very slow. While he's running, two back. All right, we're good. This Goomba placement, man, holy crap. Let's go. We're in. So for Bowser 3, once again, we're still trying to avoid spinning it as much as possible. So as soon as the boss fight starts, we're going to do C right and C down. Because there's a bomb immediately below me here. And again, we're, we're banking on a 50-50 RNG that Bowser doesn't jump. If Bowser jumps, it wastes about 7 seconds each time. So that's 7 seconds right there. And so for perfect RNG, you just want him running at you each time. On a typical run, I end up with about... Uh, I don't know. About three Bowser jumps. So having one so far is pretty good. By the way, we're coming up on time very soon. I'll, uh, I'll pretty much just mash my keyboard to let you guys know by text <laughs> that it's time. But, uh, yeah. So as I said before, the slower I spin this D-pad, you can see Bowser's actually picking up speed. Um, because of that thing I said before. So we just need a vertical shot, same as Bowser 1, just on this bomb. <laughs> and of course I didn't get it. So we'll try it again. Now this is actually unfortunate because we need Bowser to run at us. But he's not in a very good position to do that. Alright. I'll try and get him to run over here again. There we go. Alright, so we're going to spin him around one more time. Like you can see, it takes me more than 7 seconds or so to try and actually get him up to full speed. So that's why trying to hope for RNG is the best way to go. Okay, let's go. Is that gonna hit? Nope. All right, we're gonna go again. At this point, I really hope I get a sub 30, but I don't think it'll happen. All right, so now you know why I run to the other side of the star. It's basically so that I have enough distance from Bowser that, uh, you know, he'll just run at me again. And I can line him up on this side. Alright, let's go. Let's try it one more time. There we go. Alright, so get ready on time as soon as you see me <laughs> mash any garbled text on the keyboard. <laughs> and that's time. Um, so even though I can't see any of you in chat, uh, hopefully some of my folk have, uh, have come across and uh, supported the channel. Thank you uh, for letting me do my run on this channel uh, and in this marathon and for, uh, yeah, for all of you that watched, I hope you enjoyed the run and uh, look forward to the rest of the runs throughout this marathon. Dude, we got a 28.03, that's pretty good. Like, we're seven minutes ahead of estimate, and considering the schedule's fallen behind a bit, I think that'll help make up the time. So yeah, uh, I guess that's where I'll say goodbye.
shake